Wow, we have lots of people coming in. For those who have just joined our meeting, please uh, uh, mute yourself. Thank you very much. Okay. Wow, I've seen many people from the US as well. Right now in the meeting room, we have about 105 people. Yeah, we'll wait for a few more minutes before we start. We still have more people joining. Bear with us. We still have more people joining. And all time you you can turn off your video if you want to. Yeah. We are I welcome everybody. Uh, we are still meeting more people.
Oh. Alan, can you unshare the music? Sure. And I'm going to share the thing for them to scan first. Are they stop sharing? Hand over the host to you. Yeah. Later on, we start the recording. Huh? We wait first. Mm -hmm. Hello, all. For those of you who just joined us, uh, we, I have put together on the screen uh, two uh, QR codes uh, uh, for you to, uh, if you want to join, if you are international, uh, you're going to join our LinkedIn group, you can scan the LinkedIn group and join on LinkedIn. And if you are in China and you're using WeChat, feel free to scan the WeChat. I'm going to leave the thing on while we're waiting for more people to come in. Ellen, you have set all the speaker, right? To the top, basically, yep. right? All the speakers okay. have been uh, pinned to the top. Thank you. Okay. Okay, I think uh, we got to get started. Okay, good. Uh, you want to get the recording started first, Ellen? I already started, okay, started the recording. Uh, just one more time for those who want to join your international, want to join our group, please scan the link in. And if you're in China, feel free to scan the WeChat. I'm going to leave it on for 10 more seconds before we get started. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, hello, uh, my name is James Ong. I'll be your host for today for the next 90 minutes. I'd like to welcome, welcome all of you to join our international webinar. And the title of our talk is Co-Shaping Co Our Sustainable Future uh, for AI. I'm going to explain to you uh, uh, later on why we set up, we do this webinar as well as why we uh, uh, choose this particular topic. We're very excited to have all of you uh, joining us. So this is the agenda for today. Today, we are be doing the opening for the next five minutes. After that, we're going to invite each of our speaker to give a 10 minute sharing about the topic today. After that, we're gonna go into a 20 minutes of uh, panel dialogue and exchange. Uh, after that, you could, uh, then we we'll go into the audience Q&A session before we wrap up with the photo taking. So if you want your photo to be taken, please stay until the end of the, uh, of the webinar. At the same time, whenever you have any question, please feel free to type into the, uh, uh, into the chat room. Oh, sorry, right? Okay, I'm gonna start with two questions. Uh, number one is why are we uh, doing this webinar? This is a webinar uh, as a warm up to the yeah. World AI Conference. Uh, to the World AI Conference, which is going to be held in Shanghai in uh, July uh, 7 to 10. Uh, the World AI Conference uh, is one of the most spectacular AI conference in the world. And there's many agenda being shaped over there. Uh, so uh, it's well known to have uh, Elon Musk and Jack Ma that has been involved in many of the debates on AI in the last few conference. Uh, the AI, World AI Conference has been held since uh, 2018. This is the fourth year is going to be held. And, uh, and it has uh, uh, invited many different uh, speakers as well as our audience participating. I'm going to share some data later on. Uh, it's also an international conference. Many experts, including Turing Award winners, experts has been invited to give a talk there as well. Um, the statistic here you can see uh, is that uh, the event in 2019 has uh, invited close to more than 500 uh, uh, speaker and three, over 300 corporations with many people participating. You can get more information on the website. Uh, this is an offline event. 
And then in 2020, because of the COVID-19, everything went online. So after it went online, we, the conference continue. The show must go on. And then this year, uh, the 2021 World AI Conference is going to be double the size uh, in terms of exhibition uh, compared to 2019. So for those of you who are interested to join, you can go to LinkedIn, join our group, and then we will uh, guide you to go and register online for some of the live broadcasts, as well as if you are physically able to travel to Shanghai, you can attend the event as well. So that is the first question uh, about why we are organizing the webinar as a warm up to this major conference. And this uh, webinar is actually uh, co-organized by Donghao Lansen and uh, Artificial Intelligence International Institute. And we are also, also very, very glad to have uh, Singapore government who organized the SWITCH, uh, Singapore Week of the Innovation Technology, as well as the uh, Slingshot, which is the major competition, uh, global competition in Singapore to be our community partner. So the next question is that, why are we choosing this topic? The topic is called co-shaping our sustainable future with AI. So I'd like to show you uh, the chart below. Uh, for those of you who are in AI, you probably know, but for those who are actually new to AI, AI actually has gone through uh, many rounds of boom, uh, three rounds of boom and wave, and a two rounds of winters. So this is the chart you can go uh, online and Google and find this chart. So it has gone through multiple rounds of technology uh, uh, revolution, as well as uh, up and down. So one of the reasons we organize this particular topic is because I think with the next generation of AI based on machine learning and deep learning, there are a lot of uh, characteristic about uh, this type of system where uh, there are a lot of uncertainty uh, in terms of a black box effect, in terms of explainability, and there are a lot of implication uh, in terms of data privacy and et cetera. So this, is a, this particular webinar is designed so that we can talk about three types of sustainability for our future. One of them is in terms of science and technology. The other one is about commercial. The last one is about humanity level of sustainability. Uh, all our four speakers will have lots of things to cover on that. So based on this setting, uh, you know the motivation, uh, feel free to start uh, formulate some questions. So uh, first of all, I'd like to quickly uh, go into the speaker and uh, in, do the quick introduction of our speaker. We are very, very fortunate to be able to invite four distinguished speakers from all over the world. Uh, we have Francesca, uh, Dr. Francesca Rossi from uh, IBM. She's actually living in New York. She's actually waking up in the morning to attend this event. She's IBM AI ethics global leaders. That means she's in charge of all the global uh, ethics related issues uh, at, at IBM and set the direction. Also, Francesca is going to be the next president of Triple AI, which is probably the most famous uh, AI organization in the world. And she has distinguished career as a professor. And right now she's also an IBM fellow, a Triple I fellow and Europe AI fellow. Then we have Dr. Altime uh, Hazard. He's a professor uh, AI at University of Bremen. Uh, at Tongji University. And uh, he's also a fellow of architect, the National German Academy of Science and Engineering, very accomplished. And she has been in the industry for a long time. So she has a lot of experience to share with you. Uh, again, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Altheim Hezog is from Germany. Then third, we are very glad to have uh, uh, from Singapore, uh, Dr. Ong Yu Sun. Ong Yu Sun is the Chief AI Scientist uh, for Singapore Agency of Science, Technology and Research, uh, which is called ASTAR. Many of you in Singapore will know it very well. He's in charge of the AI direction for ASTAR. He's also the Chair Professor at Nanyang Technology University and IEEE Fellow. Uh, last but not least, uh, we have Ben, uh, Tian, Mr. Tian Fong. Uh, Mr. Tianfeng is the Dean of Sense Time Intelligent Industry Research Institute. Uh, he's also the former founding Dean of Alibaba Cloud Research Institute. So one of the earliest research labs set up by a Chinese company. So I'm probably not doing justice to each one of them in terms of their introduction. I'm sure they're gonna introduce themselves a lot more when they start to get into the discussion. So as such, I'm going to unshare my uh, slide and uh, I'm gonna invite uh, Francisca uh, to share your uh, PPT and begin your sharing. Thank you very much, Francesca. 
Thanks, James. Uh, okay, so let me try to share my. Take your time. Um, okay. Mm, okay, coming. Eh? It's a bit slow. Um, okay, while we wait for the slides to appear, um, okay. Do you so see my slides? It's still being displayed, I think, uh, because of the number no. of user. Let's wait a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, and now we can, can you present, can you do a presentation more again? Yeah, yeah, I, I'm doing it. It's just a bit uh, slow. Slow, take your time. <laughs> it's just slow to get the, come on. Anyway, so let me start while we wait to see the presentation mode. So, um, so, okay. So what I would like to contribute to this panel and thank you very much, James, for inviting me and for allowing me to address this audience uh, is the various aspects of AI that have to do with uh, ethics and sustainability in general uh, from many points of view, as you mentioned. Um, so, as uh, James said, you know, so I work at IBM Research and I am uh, uh, the AI ethics global leader for the company. So, that means that I uh, contribute to uh, and lead the, the initiatives within IBM uh, that have to do with AI ethics from, uh, uh, you know, the I co-chair the internal AI ethics board, which is the centralized governance around AI ethics at IBM that has to do with uh, uh, things like uh, toolkits uh, for bias detection mitigation or uh, educational modules or new methodologies for uh, AI development that include uh, AI ethics solutions or and even you know a lot of work on external partnerships, um, multi-stakeholder usually, uh, because I really believe that that's the only approach that can help us you know address and identify and address these issues around AI ethics. So let me um, give you my idea. Um, I'm trying to move to the next slide. Um, Okay, so uh, mm, I don't see it moving to the next slide. Okay, but let me say that my idea of uh, you know AI, it's clear, I think, to many of also the people that are listening that AI really is uh, used to be just a science, then it became a technology, and now it's really a social technical. Uh, um, um, endeavor, uh, meaning that uh, it has to do with, uh, uh, you know, how, you know, yes, we progress with the technology, but also has really a big impact uh, on our life. So let me try to, uh, okay, so, okay, so this is the, what I wanted to show you. So yes, it is science, it is technology, but really has a lot of impact on how we live, how we work, how we interact with each other, how the society functions, and how the governments also impacts on the governments, because the governments, as well as other uh, parties that co-regulate and uh, try to drive the technology in the in the right direction, and also as an impact, uh, you know, on environment, which is environment is so part of our of our life, of where we live, of our you know planet. Uh, so that's why AI is not anymore really a science or a technology, but also is a discipline that has to involve also other experts from other disciplines, because it's important to hear from those that understand what it means to uh, evaluate the impact of uh, technology onto our society. Um, Okay, trying to move to the next slide. 
So uh, when the next slide will come up, you will see that uh, there are many issues that uh, this uh, pervasive use of AI in our society um, brings about. Uh, and some of them are legitimate concerns uh, that uh, arise whenever a technology is so pervasive in our life, in our everyday life. Uh, so they are very general. They apply to any technology that generates really big transformations uh, in our society. But others are a bit more specific, like James said, uh, to the techniques that AI uses to solve problems. So for example, it has to do with the fact that uh, some techniques in AI really need a lot of uh, data in order to provide the personalized services. So that of course raises uh, uh, questions about uh, um, you know, data, data handling and data governance and data sharing. Uh, then, of course, there is the issue that, that was mentioned already of uh, some techniques that are very opaque, kind of a black box. It's not easy to understand how to get to a solution or to a recommendation or a decision from the input data. And so that uh, that's, uh, raises issues about trust because, uh, of course, a decision support system that cannot explain why it makes a certain recommendation so is not easy to be trusted and also to be adopted and to follow or to even question his recommendations. Uh, um, uh, I see. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying. Yes, okay, I'm trying to get to the next slide, fine. So then also uh, it's important that uh, since we allow AI to make recommendations or, actually, or even make decisions, then it's important that we can be sure that the, the AI systems are aware of our values. And for example, fairness is one of them. We don't want AI system to replicate or even amplify um, uh, discriminations in the decisions of the recommendations. Accountability questions are also very important. Who is accountable if uh, the AI system makes a mistake? Because we know that they're based on statistics and they always have a small percentage of errors. Uh, question of uh, um, prof profiling humans and manipulating their preferences. So question related to human and moral agency. And also, you know, good or bad uses of the technology, as well as you know, impact on society and on the jobs in particular. So, uh, in general, to take care of these issues or even to identify them, uh, technical solutions are not enough. So, in order to go from very high-level principles around these issues to practical actions, one has to put in place a lot of different. Uh, initiatives and activities, and here I mentioned just some of them that describe what we do internally at IBM uh, in order to address these issues. So you see that there are in the middle part, you know, we identified the relevant concerns, uh, the principles to, uh, that tell us, you know, guiding principles to how we want to behave uh, uh, on these concerns. And then we move to guidelines, toolkits, education, policies, methodologies. And on top of it, we build a centralized governance. And then you see that there are also a lot of multi-stakeholder partnership that allow us to bring our expertise to others, but also to learn together with other stakeholders what are the best practices. So the point is that is important for me to convey is that technological solutions to these issues are uh, uh, important, but they are not enough. They need to be complemented with all these other initiatives that are important for changing the culture and consulting with all the stakeholders. Um, so let me go to the next point in that is that, uh, yeah, well, AI is, is uh, a technology that needs to be developed in the right way with the right properties like fairness, explainability, transparency, robustness, and so on, as we mentioned. But it also have to be, has to be uh, directed towards applications that can make our world sustainable. 
And so one definition of sustainability, of course, is the one given by the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals that give a vision of the future, which actually is not really that much in the future because it's a vision of the 17 Sustainable Development Goals that the idea would be to achieve them uh, in 2030. So AI can actually help a lot in uh, achieving these goals. So here it's a result of a study that was done uh, like uh, last year about how AI has been used and uh, in prove, you know, in uh, uh, and uh, reported in some papers uh, has been used to uh, progress towards uh, the sustainable development goals. So here you see the goals, the 17 goals are divided into three categories, society, economy, and environment. And for each goal, you see a lot of uh, uh, different, uh, you know, uh, a lot of different targets because every goal includes a lot of targets. And then you see that the green part are uh, papers that say that how AI could help achieving those goals that or those targets. And the yellow one instead are papers that show Can people go on mute? Thank you. And paper, uh, so the, the yellow part are papers that show that AI has actually been, uh, uh, been an inhibitor for achieving that goal. So fortunately you see most of what you see is green. So that means that really AI can play a really a big part in achieving those goals. And there are initiatives that try you know, to, to uh, enhance that, uh, that power. So let me give you a le some lessons learned for, uh, uh, from a program within uh, IBM research that is called IBM Science for Social Good that started already a few years ago in 2016 that actually help uh, the new generation of AI researchers and developers understand what it means to use and deploy AI on uh, to use and deploy AI uh, on uh, issues that are on problems that are related to some sustainable development goals. So the program has uh, uh, students or PhD students or postdoc that come to IBM well, now virtually, but they used to come to IBM for the summer and be meant and be working with some IBM researchers on a problem. And here you see some examples of them uh, where the data comes and the problem itself comes from an external party, usually a foundation, an NGO that has the problem as the data and wants somebody to solve that problem. So every time they come, the, the, one of the students, uh, they really address uh, not only they address the problem to, and they try to find a solution, but they also learn what it means to work with, within a technology company, but in collaboration with uh, an external party that has, again, the problem and the data. So, uh, so the next slide shows that, uh, well, okay, let me go back. Uh, well, there are a lot of problems, as, as I've shown in the previous slide, that you can address, but you wouldn't like to start from scratch every time. Otherwise, this program is not really sustainable. So how do you understand how to uh, uh, learn from one student coming, one project being done, one solution being put together to not start from scratch from the last solution. So, and we uh, analyzed a lot of different problems uh, that we have solved, like for example, this one that apparently they are very different, you know, like hunting Zika uh, for, with machine learning or uh, uh, something about the cognitive disease or uh, uh, cancer treatment or antibiotics or COVID-19 molecular explorer, but they all have some pattern. Uh, and uh, so by analyzing that pattern, that uh, can allow you to scale. So they, uh, but the pattern is not enough. Then we also need to 
scaling uh, using uh, an infrastructure, putting together an infrastructure that uh, allows to really have a global view of the problem and then to allow co an entire community, not just that small group of people, the students, the IBM researchers and the NGO to collaborate and to work towards that problem. So for example, here is an example of a platform that we put together where uh, a community can collaborate on the COVID-19 molecular explorer. And then even the community collaboration uh, should be supported by uh, computing power. And that's why, for example, we put together, together with other companies and the US government and so on, the high performance computing consortium for COVID-19 that has really a lot of computing power that many can use uh, in order to address uh, any uh, you know, uh, problem related to uh, addressing COVID-19. And then, of course, uh, what is really you know, important to have is to have a sustainable business model, meaning a business model that can, even economically being sustainable, to address those problems that are related to the sustainable development goals. And this is not that easy because uh, uh, you know, the business model that is needed is uh, slightly different from the one that usually we have to uh, put in together a product uh, that uh, is uh, uh, you know, available and is useful to some of our clients. So um, fortunately, there are initiatives that try to uh, address this issue and these issues and uh, to help build AI for uh, um, a sustainable development goals achievement. So this is one example of one of them. This is a summit, AI for Good Global Summit that happens uh, every year in Geneva and started in 2017. And you see that it really grew up a lot exponentially over the various years. And the, 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 the goal of this uh, uh, event is really to put together the two parts of the uh, solution here, those that uh, are familiar with the problems uh, and the data, uh, which means the UN agencies or the other NGOs, and the other side, those that can uh, solve the problems with their skills and the technology, so the tech companies or the research centers. Another initiative that I want to mention is, is the Global Partnership on AI that started in 2020, that puts together several countries, including Singapore, including many other countries that you see here. And that is based on the OECD AI principles that are shared and endorsed by these countries and has these goals really to understand how uh, global cooperation can help in uh, getting closer closer to the UN sustainable goals using AI combined possibly with other technology. So that's uh, to me is a, a very you know, promising approach uh, because I really think that global cooperation and multi-stakeholder uh, uh, work is really the only approach to achieve uh, you know, significant results in order to use AI to achieve a vision of the world that we have for the future. So let me stop here. Uh, Thank you, Francesca. Thank you very much. I uh, understand there's a slack time in the network. Uh, you have to cover quite many things. Uh, very interesting presentations. Uh, do not worry. Uh, we have a lot more questions to ask later on. Thank you, Francesca. Uh, all, time, all time, you want to share? Yep. <clears throat> Let me see. Okay, and now presentation mode. Thank you. So, is it okay? Is the yeah, presentation uh, mode visible? No, it's not actually. Ah, does it take time or? I think it's the same problem as earlier. Okay, okay, let me see. Then we change the settings. What about now? Uh, no, actually it's only halfway. It's cut off by half. 
Oh. Interesting. Very interesting. So that's another example that you can prepare very well <laughs> and still it won't work. Yeah, it works during rehearsal. <laughs> <laughs> so let me try it once more. I, I'll stop here and let me try it the other way around. Um, we still have more audience joining anyway. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> So I'll go into presentation mode first, and then I'm going to share. Mm. What about now? Yes, it's working. Wonderful. The, the stage is yours. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So thank you very much, James, for inviting me to this webinar. And I am look uh, very much forward to the discussion afterwards. So good morning, good afternoon, or maybe even good evening to everyone. I'm going to talk about artificial intelligence and the Internet of Things for sustainable urban planning. And as Francesca just mentioned, the UN uh, sustainability goals include of course also the environment and uh, we know that the cities that the cities in in the world will um, will cover about uh, 65 percent of the population within the next 10 15 years and that means in effect that we really have to take into account what happens in the city and we have to plan accordingly. And now I have to switch. So, and the cost of rapid urbanization is of course that we have a lot of very fast growing city agglomerations worldwide. And the concurrent phenomena of the high density concentration of socioeconomic elements and the divided governance become the bottleneck in the sustainable development of those regions. And that's why the traditional urbanization is coming to its end, as it has brought about with it serious environmental pollution, social conflicts, huge energy consumption, and the exhaustion of, of the demographic dividend. There is a lot of pressure of non-sustainable land, water, and energy use, which is caused by high de intensity and high density development. There is serious regional environment pollution. There's urban sprawl, deteriorated traffic and congestion, and the over concentration of mega cities, and also a lot of problems relating to integrated urban rural development, quality of life, and social risks. So the outlook is not very good. But maybe AI and the Internet of Things can help to alleviate things. And in order to, to plan, to make better plans for the future cities, we really need evidence-based decisions. On the other hand, a city is a very, very complex system which consists of a lot of almost independent entities, but there are also quite strong relationships between all those areas. And in addition, we have to count on very differing innovation cycles, which may stretch from, let's say, about two to three years for cars to more than a hundred years for wastewater channels. So there is a lot of things to consider when we are doing city planning. And we have to consider those innovation cycles as well as the strong interdependencies between those areas. And that means we have to build really good models. And that's, of course, where AI can come in. So AI, OT, AI and the Internet of Things and Services can really help for all those areas where we want to achieve smart mobility, smart buildings, and smart cities, smart products, smart factories, smart logistics, smart health, smart grids, and a lot of others. And the good thing about this is that the Internet of Services and the Internet of Things 
and the basic AI technologies apply to all of those areas. That be, means we have a basic set of technologies which we can use to improve all those areas. So we have three tasks and one AI platform. We can do an intelligent diagnosis for urban agglomerations. We can do intelligent planning for urban agglomerations. And we can also build models for the intelligent governance for urban agglomerations. And all those three tasks are based on one intelligent platform for urban agglomerations. So the intelligent upgrade of the sustainable development of intelligent cities depends on the establishment of innovation dynamics that involve multiple disciplines, multiple departments and multiple institutions. And qualitative with together with quantitative AI methods for sustainable intelligent city planning and operation is really a must there. That means if you use AI technologies and the Internet of Things and the corresponding data platforms, we really can do analytics and prediction. And this is one example we did at Tongxi University where we built a model for a new district in a city and we build a model based on uh, issues from government, from the citizens, from the planners and finance. So it was not a very difficult model to be built, but it was already enough to do a simulation of that future district uh, starting from 2018 and having a result, a simulation result in the year 2030. So one could really see through those simulations to what what effect some decisions would have, right? Where to allocate, allocate for instance, residential areas, where to allocate uh, industrial areas, where to allocate schools, uh, government buildings, kindergartens, shops, and so on and so on. And so this can really lead to very, very good decisions for urban planning. And this is at the city level, so to say, and the next example is at the, yeah, let's say, manufacturing at the plant level. And this is an example from Germany. There is a, a, fact, uh, uh, a company called Wittenstein SE in Germany, and they have already implemented a very, very smart production plant. They uh, started with a holistic process optimization for the sustainable production of gear wheels and who knows what the production of gear wheels means is that this is one of the most noisy and really very very dirty um, production steps you can have when working with metal so in the planning for this uh, new manufacturing plants they planned for low noise low gas emissions, they plan to use renewable energy, they plan to have minimal resource consumption through uh, AI and the uh, IoT, which means they had to build in sensors and they had to use AI functions to control, for instance, noise emissions, waste, CO2 emissions, water and wastewater. And as it turns out, this plan was also fully air conditioned but in the end they even saved one third of the energy they had used before just by all those intelligent controls and so they were very glad that they had uh, removed the old building and built that new factory and in addition they built this new factory fully integrated into an environmentally demanding residential area with passive energy homes. And so the workers who work in that factory can work in that residential area and also live there within one district, which avoids in addition, uh, of course, commuting. So there is a double purpose with that. And with that, with those two examples, I would like to close my uh, presentation. And thank you very much for your uh, uh, time. Thank you. Thank you all time. Uh, appreciate the presentation. Uh, very interesting that you're already working cross-border from Germany to China. Look forward to ask you some questions later on. Uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Uh, Yusun, 
Are you ready to share your presentation? Go forward. Okay, let me share. Can you see my presentation? Yes, uh, you need to put in the presentation more. Thank you. Can you see it now? Yes, uh, perfect. Let me try to... Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Dr. Ong Yusun. Okay, good day everyone, wherever you are. So first of all, thanks to James and the others for organizing this event for the benefit of everyone having interest in AI. So I'm Yusun, presently a professor of computer science at Nanyang Technological University at Singapore. And at the same time, serving as the chief AI scientist of the Singapore Agency for Science, Technology and Research. My personal research interest is in machine learning evolution and optimization. So as you can see on my screen, it's basically a photo of the, what we call hive. It's like a beehive or in the, Cantonese or in Chinese, we, we also call it dim sum building. So this is a, a US dollar 33 million smart learning facility for students at the Nanyang Technical University. That was unveiled in 2015, part of the beautiful campus that I work at. So lucky me. So these compartments that you see are equipped with flexible cluster seating for small group discussion multiple LCD screens and wireless communication tools. And there are balconies and gardens for informal collaborative learning. So if you ever come to Singapore, do visit NTU, the campus is basically open to public. Uh, not, not at the moment, I mean, because of, of COVID. Now um, you can see uh, some of this before. You can see these drones that I have over here. These are actually uh, the AI bots and autonomous car additions by me as part of my imagination of what it might look like in the future. So today, AI, as we know, is a pervasive technology that's transforming many walks of our life. At NTU, as well as ASTAR and Singapore in particular, there are numerous interesting AI initiatives that has been launched across a wide range of domains from healthcare to fintech, marketing, navigation, and so on. So I shall have this privilege of uh, sharing this with you. So this is uh, some of the success of AI research teams at ASTA serving this society in a remarkable way during this unprecedented time, coping with the many new challenges brought by the COVID-19 pandemic which the world is experiencing even at this moment in many places. So in particular, the research teams at ASTAR had brew fresh, so they had to brew fresh AI technologies to support the urgent needs of the country in dealing with the pandemic, you know, including the use of the creation of AI text for detecting COVID-19 pneumonia from the chest X-rays of patients to identify potential COVID-19 carriers and also to assist COVID patients with wearables that will continuously monitor their condition in a wireless manner. You know, at a time where masks becomes a first line of protection, and in fact, in Singapore, it's mandatory under law to put it on. Existing AI for face recognition had to be refined rapidly to conduct face recognition under new challenging conditions including having only half a face availability to detect and also having to cope with the multitude of skin tones uh, to deal with the uh, a multiracial and a metropolitan city nature of Singapore. So the ASTAR team members came in to serve the nation in the respect. Also during the outbreak, thousands of patients had to be, uh, had, that were staying in community care facilities back then needed constant healthcare services. This is when Singapore Sing Health together with ASTAR 
conceive Dr. Kovic, which is a virtual AI teleconsult chatbot on Instagram, on, sorry, on Telegram, which is an instant messaging service to improve communication with COVID patients while minimizing any transmission risks among the healthcare workers. So patients who subscribe to the service then get reminders and regular checkup or check in on their mental well-being. Other research teams in ASTAR invented language translator and multi-language learning technologies that were shown to support digital education well, while students study from home, such as the world's first Malay and Tamil speech evaluation systems. So let me then, through this conference, I want to take this opportunity, opportunity to relay our big kudos to all of the scientists and engineers of the world for their contributions in working along with our frontline warriors. Because many of all these AI scientists and engineers are always supporting others behind the scene. So a big thank you to everyone. Because myself, I'm an AI scientist and engineer too. Let me move on. So in this next slide, I'll move on to the recent evolution of AI. You know, in particular, AI remains in its winter state for a while. And in the late 1990s, with the rapid advancement in compute power, as demonstrated by IBM's Deep Blue, in chess as one of the key milestones. You know, the advancement in machine learning, particularly deep learning, availability of big data in the World Wide Web, social media, and others, have led to the success of AI that we see today, where we see many successful personal assistants and autonomous devices. Uh, they are made available to us in our daily life. So after the key milestone achievement of AI, like DeepMind's AlphaGo, today we see, we continue to see numerous success of DL of deep learning where new highs in prediction accuracy are reported in top venues across applications of computer vision, natural language processing and others. Nonetheless, you know, I just wonder at what price would this achieve? So I'll take this opportunity, you know, after doing a bit of a survey, let me sh just show some of my findings on what has been reported. So let me see, you can see over here what I have, you know, based on the figures that uh, were reported, some have shown that there seems to be a notion that today's AI research buys better results with more compute power and data. And majority of these papers that appear at top venues targets mainly accuracy. And based on these figures that are obtained from OpenAI, for example, the demand for compute power by deep learning were reported to have ballooned more than 300,000 times or 30 million percent within a period of five years. So I, I've taken a comparison between AlexNet that was introduced back in 2012 with AlphaGo Zero in 2018. So I, let, let me just illustrate this using layman terms. So the compute demand of the neural architecture search approach that was reported in 2016, for example, can be estimated to emit more than 400,000 kg of CO2. That is the carbon footprint of this neural architecture search. This is equivalent to the same amount of carbon footprint to produce approximately 99,000 kgs of rice that could feed approximately 670,000 people in the day. So this is calculated based on Singapore terms because you know, the, the carbon emissions, I mean, the PUE is different for different countries. Besides, be, besides you know, carbon footprint, the other thing that I'd like to highlight is that the, we are seeing also similar trends in the growing number of parameters or the size of present deep learning neural networks model. In NLP, for example, the uh, deep learning transformer neural network size has been reported to balloon by more than 10,000 times in a short span of three years. If you were to compare GPT back in 2018, it's 
basically dwarfed in comparison by Google's brain transformer, which has now more than one trillion parameters. So I just want to highlight, you know, that current AI is very much, you know, based on the uh, space on deep learning is very much like its end, like its neural network pre predecessor, which remains to be extremely data hungry and compute hungry. Other notable consideration, which has been also shared by Francisca, that is basically black box and currently really lack regulatory and governance maturity, trustworthiness and safety into this AI. So this takes me to the next slide, which I will talk about, and I hope I still have time, is that some of these pressing research questions that I believe continue to face the fuse of artificial intelligence for it to be safe and sustainable for the years to come. First, it will be sustainable AI in terms of the sustainability of the technology itself. And second, AI sustainability, which pertains to the notion of something similar to ESG, you know, environment, social, and governance. So just as air serves as a basic element of biological life, here I have five R's that I'll briefly discuss as reported in my uh, paper back in 2019, stated below. You know, like how humans need air, this five AIR, which reads as air, can thus be seen as the basic elements of artificial life. So these five are namely rationalizability, resilience, reproducibility, realism, and responsibility. The first three R mainly focuses on the technological performance of AI. Briefly, the first R is rationalizability. It's about the need to seek for AI approaches that's explainable, interpretable, transparent, capable of coping and uncertainty as well. You know, AI should know what it knows. It should know what it doesn't know and how confident it knows is also useful. At least it's useful for how and why a decision is made. Thus, having AI make decision that is rationalizable or makes sense to human and that AI fulfills also the laws of nature will certainly help cultivate the acceptance of modern AI systems, especially you know, in life critical situations. The second R six for resilient in AI approaches encompasses safety, such as uh, security for mission critical tasks. AI models should you know, be resistant to malicious threat, such as adversary examples, data poisoning, it should be capable of working with less data, coping with our distribution data, and minimize catastrophic situation, having the ability to recover from failure if things do go wrong. The third R is on reproducibility of AI approaches, which could involve verifiability, validation, certification of AI systems to industrial standards, for example, such that the deployed system perform as claimed and maintains that trustworthiness in the AI. So inculcating community mindset of code, model, sh model sharing, creating common repository where codes and models can be cross-verified and shared will help bring us all towards reproducibility. The other two R's on the other hand shift attention towards a different feature more the ESG. I think for realism, what I was referring to is what and how an organization or even a country perceive AI as, which is very much often shaped by our different culture and other factors, as we can see from the different nations approach and a policy towards AI. Particularly, do we seek for humanizing of AI in the pursuit of realism in autonomous intelligent AI? that encompasses, for example, effectiveness, collectiveness, as well as empathy, empathy, AI, or is homeland security and economic factors that take precedence over, over all others. Last but not least will be responsibility. And I think due to time, I will cover this, but this is something that uh, Francisca has already covered. 
But one of the things that I want to highlight would be besides all this governance, data provenance, and so on, I would, I would think that environmental consideration is very important as AI has grown really too big to be, to be uh, ignored in terms of how much carbon footprint is, is creating. Thus, I think new metrics to take carbon footprint into consideration should be considered. So due to come time constraint, I shall leave you with a final showcase of NTU or Nanyang Technological University AI for Social Good, where AI has been shown to assist special needs children with emotion recognition and learning. Enjoy the movie. Getting special needs students to learn social and emotional skills through mobile games. Three such apps have been developed after a nine week pilot led by Nanyang Technological University. It's part of efforts to use artificial intelligence for social good. In this app, students match their facial expression with the emoji to score points. Another lets them create butterflies that spring to life when they smile. Developers say these games help students to recognize and express how they feel. After a trial involving 140 students from the Association for Persons with Special Needs, the games are now rolled out to all of its schools. The project is a collaboration between the Association, NTU, and video game developer Yuzu Games. Emotional learning is actually a standard class that our primary schools uh, have to teach before they move on to the, the next level. of education so um, and there has been some struggle for some students uh, to learn this you know just from textbook and sometimes they do they use worksheets so now it's very different um, it's more fun the trainers can then adjust the difficulty of gamification and choose from several social scenarios that suit different learning needs of the students. So very much towards moving towards a more personalized and progressive learning curriculum. That's all I have. Thank you, Yusun. Didn't realize you're a movie star on, on television. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you for your sharing. Uh, I'm sure you cover a lot of material. Later on, the interesting part will be on the panel session. Right. Uh, ben, Ben Tian, you want to share your PPT for the next 10 minutes? Thank you. Okay. So the, for the rest of the audience, we're going to go into the panel discussion after uh, Ben's presentation. Thank you. Okay. Uh, you can see my PPT. Uh, I'd like to turn on your video. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, I feel honored and responsible to be here. Uh, thanks, Dr. James. Uh, provide a far-reaching subject. My topic is responsible AI for shaping better future. Uh, why do we need AI for SDGs? In my opinion, there are three major challenges. Uh, so the first challenge is shortage of manpower from two, uh, 2021 to 2030. So far, uh, 34 nations have uh, stepped into super aged phase and there are uh, 1.7 billion population who are over 65. As noted in a CNN report about the survey, the second challenge is outbreak of uh, smart device uh, with workforce skills missing. According to strategy and uh, uh, analytics data, uh, 50 billion smart uh, Internet of Things devices are enabled by 5G and AI innovation. Well, most of new skills should open education classes for industrial workers and children for the future. Uh, the last and most important challenge is climate uh, changing. The uh, uh, United Nations study show that 1.5 degrees of global uh, warming accelerates sea level rise contribute to uh, extreme weather conditions and affect a uh, 50 percentage of world GDP. Uh, what's AI for SDGs? Uh, SDGs lead us to achieve a better and more sustainable future for all. AI for SDGs encourage us to uh, develop responsible AI technologies that advance the 
world's economies, social, uh, society, and humanity for a better tomorrow of all human beings, as well as uh, such times mission. Uh, in uh, February uh, 2020, at Vienna workshop on science, technology, and innovation for the SDGs of the United Nations, I made a speech uh, with code of ethic uh, for AI sustainable development topic with four uh, core values, including human technology, shared benefits, integrated development, and open innovation. Uh, we demonstrated our core values uh, with the effort to fight uh, coronavirus outbreak by developing effective solutions that screen and detect individuals with fever in a crowd, uh, uh, contributing to the public uh, welfare and interest through our uh, AI technology. Uh, in AI for SDGs 2030 uh, webinar with United Nations uh, Development program, program, program in May 2020, we released an upgraded report, a code of ethic for AI sustainable development. Based on uh, AI SDG framework, we proposed and practice uh, four categories and 12 principles. Uh, principles of AI ethics are respect open dialogues and inclusive culture to support SDGs of 5, 8, 10, uh, and 16. Uh, principles of AI benefiting people are sharing benefits and building an inclusive society to support SDGs 1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, principles of AI empowering industries are accountability self-discipline and safety to support SDGs 6, uh, 11, 12, and uh, 13. Uh, principles of trust was AI uh, open innovation to make technology more reliable to support SDGs 7, 9, uh, 15, and 17. Uh, on World AI Conference uh, 2020, uh, we took Shanghai an initiative for 10 issues of AI sustainable uh, development 2030, such as sustainable development of mankind, social governments, uh, man machine uh, symbiosis, uh, integrate uh, intelligent industry, uh, ethical uh, concerns, and so on. Recently, we contributed to uh, ethics of AI. Uh, successful case to United Nations new report, uh, results guide on artificial intelligence strategies. Now you can download from the UN uh, official website for full uh, edition uh, document. Uh, let's consider some example for how AI reshaping Chinese traditional culture. Uh, the first case is uh, Palace uh, Museum, Sunshine brings a history back to life and uh, for all ages by collaborating with Paris Museum in Beijing. Uh, Youngster uh, may learn to appreciate culture and art from AR integrated uh, exhibitions, uh, which enable them to picture themselves, taking the exam in the ancient scene of uh, imperial uh, examinations and high photos with uh, Confucius. Uh, the second case is Hubei uh, Provincial Museum. Provincial Museum since time collaborated with Hubei uh, Provincial Museum earlier to bring back the, the uh, melody of the uh, Zheng Houyi uh, chain bells uh, through AR technology. Visitors uh, will only need to point the camera of the mobile phone or tablet to uh, instru uh, instruments to play direct directly. Uh, the third case is MOC Shanghai. Since time uh, collaborated with MOC Shanghai to present the exhibition art uh, multiply uh, AI series, uh, elementary word, smart art. Uh, the artworks were integrated with sometimes AI technology such as face uh, recognition. Uh, recognition, 3D face uh, reconstruction, 
uh, neural style transfer body sensing uh, data uh, visualization to bring visitors fresh uh, inspiration on the beauty of life by offering a prim uh, aesthetic experience. Uh, since time provide uh, K-12 AI fundamentals uh, classes for more than 2,700 uh, middle and primary schools with 20,000 students in 30 cities. Uh, based on AI teaching materials, a program uh, platform and play mobile, especially more than uh, 7,200 AI teachers of middle and primary uh, school have independent teaching ability after our training. Uh, let's find uh, AI how to fight COVID-19 and protect all of us. Smart AI epidemic a prevention solution can screen temperature and detect people who are not wearing a mask as uh, a solution has uh, been deployed at, at a subway station of Beijing Capital International Airport, Shanghai Jiao Tong University, Shanxi History Museum, and uh, uh, so on. It accelerates the temperature screening process in public place, um, minimizing the risk of cross uh, contamination and improves efficiency of operation. operation. Uh, to support the frontline doctors in fighting against uh, COVID-19. That time collaborate with experts from Huanggang, uh, Anxi, and Suizhou cities of Hubei province to research how AI can assist uh, diagnosis, the upgraded assess care long uh, solutions supported hospitals in Hubei remotely to identify a suspected a lien from uh, the city image. Sometimes provided supercomputing resources for the school of uh, pharmaceutical uh, science at Sun Yesen University to conduct large scale drug screening to fight uh, COVID 19. Uh, Sometimes provided free AI education materials and video content for students and teachers during the lockdown. Uh, sometimes thunder E, sometimes uh, AI uh, thermal detector can be used to uh, contact this fever screening. Uh, the solution can also remind employee to wear a mask. It can be applied to entrance gate of office buildings, a construction site, and uh, industrial parts. Uh, the system is installed at the uh, headquarters of LG CNS in South Korea for the prevention and control of uh, COVID-19. Uh, we encourage all parties to join SDG's uh, 2030 course on March uh, uh, 26, uh, 2021, since the Shanghai Jiao Tong University set up the S. Uh, SJTU Computation Law and AI Ethics Research Center. Uh, and on April this year, sometime uh, participated to establish uh, the Institute of, for AI International Government uh, of Tsinghua University, aiming to combine the AI technology industry and the governance resources. On July uh, this year, uh, on June uh, this year, sometime invites expert of law, industry, and uh, scientific research every month to hold AI ethic and governance seminar and write AI sustainable development research report. Uh, well, in the end, please join us. Uh, um, let's uh, fight for the bad future together. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Appreciate you sharing. I'm sure uh, everybody got all the details, but do not worry. Uh, we're gonna go into the uh, uh, panel discussion. <laughs> Uh, so that you, uh, we can cover some of the things. I'm going to first share uh, my slide again. Uh, Francesca uh, Otien, are you guys turned on on your video? We are running a little bit late for, for the sake of the oh. audience, maybe about 10 minutes. Uh, so I, I cannot start my video. I don't know why. Uh, One second. I will uh, enable you. Alan, can you help? Sure. 
I'm on it. Thank you. Good. Yes, uh, Francisca is back on. Good. I'm sure all of you uh, uh, probably have understood everything that Francesca, all time, uh, Yusun and Ben uh, has covered. Actually, it's quite impossible. I have to admit to all of you, I spent the last two, three days reading through all their deck and learn about what they are doing. And the purpose for this webinar is actually quite impossible to address the topic that we talk about, but this is the beginning of the journey. So uh, to, together, each of them has about uh, 20, 30 years of experience and very in-depth experience from academic to industry. So it's impossible for everybody to understand, but do not worry, this is the beginning of the exercise. So before we get into the panel discussions, uh, we actually got lots of questions, <laughs> a lot of questions. I need to prioritize which question to cover. So first of all, uh, before I get to the question, I'd like to uh, share with all of you, for the audience, uh, uh, a little bit of homework that I have done. Uh, what I did is, uh, uh, I think uh, some of you may miss out on the earlier presentation. Our goal is to address sustainability in terms of AI, in terms of the science and technology, or commercial, or humanity, you know, and etc. So what I did is, uh, I was hoping that within this one and a half hour to be able to co-shape some things, to create a dialogue that may result on something that not just all five of us can do something about, but through our knowledge and experience can actually share a lot of ideas with the audience. So what I did is uh, I studied all the slides uh, collectively from all our four speakers and actually categorized them what I see as consensus uh, of what they have achieved. So the first category is more on the area of what I call the uh, sustainability uh, or humanity area. So it's all the ideas that uh, Ben and Francisca have shared on what they're doing in terms of SDG, uh, what uh, All Time has actually shared about their uh, urban uh, urbanization. And I look at what are in the sense, uh, maybe at my, based on my interpretation, what Yusun has shared about resilience is something that is something that we need to address. So there's one category of some consensus in terms of that. Then the other consensus I can see we are talking about is governance. And the one that I particularly like is what Francesca has mentioned. AI from science to technology to social technical discipline. Eh? That means the social technical part become a very interesting component. Then of course, all the keywords that you have seen like governance, responsible, reproducible, then the core value to principle and, uh, and the measures that Ben has mentioned. Then the other category I see has reached some consensus that we need to build towards a harmonious society. We want to have community collaboration, Francesca has mentioned. We have multi-stakeholder relationship. Again, that is a common consensus. Then last but not least, you see all the things at the bottom. These are all the initiatives that are actually brought up by all our four speakers that they are already doing. They are not just talking about it. They're actually happening, especially with an organization like IBM with such a global reach. Whatever Francesca believes in, she may actually can create influence to change it in every country in the world. I think that's fascinating, especially the you know, GPAI, you know, and I look at the AI for Good conference. And of course, I enjoy what Yusun has shared about what Singapore A-Star has done and what NTU has done. And then, of course, uh, what uh, example that uh, old time has shared. Now, I want to get into something more interesting where I want to send the question to the four speaker, right? So what are the new ideas? Okay? In fact, when I read through some of the slide, of course, uh, Francesca and uh, all the speaker have to go through it fairly quickly, but these are some of the keywords that I actually recognize. Now I'm actually curating all the concept. So I want the first question I want to pose to Francesca is, uh, you mentioned something called AI pipeline revision. <laughs> Francisca, can you help us to understand what that means in the layman terms? Okay, Because one of the questions from the audience was that we are not AI specialists, but we want to know, right? How does it affect my life? So I think this one term that I saw was very, very interesting. Could you address that? Sure. Uh, so what I meant is that uh, 
for those who develop uh, AI models and AI solutions, uh, they usually follow, you know, a well-defined process to design and develop a new AI service or a new AI product. That uh, pipeline of that development process um, had to be revised in the last few years in order to include by design the uh, solutions, uh, technical and non-technical solutions to some of the AI ethics issues. So typical example, the bias detection and mitigation. Um, so these, uh, these uh, new methodology, uh, new processes to be, need to be very integrated in the existing um, development pipeline for the AI, the AI models, uh, together with other uh, um, other uh, in uh, other uh, concerns that are addressed as well, uh, and they were already there in the pipeline. For example, there were the developers were already doing uh, security by design, privacy by design, and then we added also the ethics by design um, technology solutions. But again, as I said, okay. Not only technology, but also education and training of the people and diversity in teams. So, I mean, in summary, in layman term, what you're saying is that the way we look at AI should not be like any other technology. We need to change the way we produce and manufacture the whole AI towards the market. Is that the right summary, basically, for understanding? Right. Okay, yeah. good. I think you also mentioned something called sustainable business, right? So the other idea I saw from you soon uh, is a, a term called rational, uh, rationalizability and realism. Eh? I thought these are new term I never heard about. So you soon, again, in layman terms, I emphasize for the audience, right? Something that our, our audience can understand. Can you explain that, these new ideas? Okay, I guess, okay, in terms of rationalizability, what is the difference between, between this and transparency? Is that okay? In in transparency, what you get is how a decision is made, and interpretability is about how also you can interpret how a particular decision is being made. But a model can be trained in multi multiple ways. You can come so there's a, a basically a, a many to one mapping, so to speak. So the kind of output that you get, even though you're giving you the correct classification, for example, but to achieving it could be something that is not humanly rationalizable. So, so this see. is one example. Okay. I in see. another, Some... in okay. another, let me give you another example. So, you know, part of the popular area right now is physics-inspired neural networks or physics-inspired deep learning, where Physics, physical equations are, are incorporated into neural networks to ensure that when you converge into solutions that are that will follow the laws of physics. Otherwise, you end up with solutions that are deemed as uh, correct but doesn't exist in the real world. So it has to be rationalizable by the human, so to speak, either in the form of law or nature or something that human understands and makes sense. Okay. Something that human can understand, just like it could be something that are, the public can understand as well when you use AI. It makes sense because okay because you could arrive at a solution, but but the way that it's it's been done doesn't make sense. Okay, so can you tell me what is realism? That we mean by realism? I think that is a new term I never heard from anybody actually. Okay. So so my my view of realism comes from two perspectives. Number one is that what is considered real, I guess. If you look at how things has evolved, the way the way people perceive AI or, or artificial lives in uh, by different countries or by by different organizations are very much different, and it's basically shaped by many factors, from culture to ethnics to the readiness and the state of the organization. As you can okay. see, how different organization has taken precedence in different ways. So some has taken industrialization as a priority. Some has taken, you know, uh, economic advancement or national security as the key factors, while others has considered privacy as, as the priority. 
So this is one aspect of what is real to some to some culture. I see. And oh, I see. Let me share another perspective also of realism is that, uh, is that you know, what is considered real? Is it economic factors or empathy? The same technologies, for example, AI surveillance technology can be used in a positive manner for identifying adversarial wanted uh, figures or recognizing fatigue in workers before accident happens. But it can also be used for monitoring workers' productivity that are deemed as controversial. So what is real to, to different organizations and to different uh, countries will, 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 be, will depend on the culture and so on. Okay, I understand. You mean that we have to be realistic about well, the context of the AI, how it's being Correct. applied. Yeah, okay, right. I understand. Good, I'm going to move on. Next question to Ben, okay? Ben, in your presentation, you wrote something called original intention. <laughs> I'm actually curious what it means, but I do like the word popularized AI science, which is what today's conference is, this webinar is all about, to share some basic idea with the audience so that they understand, right? What, what Einstein or uh, even Stephen Hawking has done to make physics such a complex subject. So Ben, can you explain what do you mean by original intention, share benefits? Yeah. Okay. Uh, because uh, different uh, region uh, uh, and uh, different country have uh, uh, lots of uh, history and different uh, culture. Uh, so um, there are no um, one uh, one side uh, ethics for global. Uh, okay. But, uh, but we can see uh, a standard or uh, best practice for uh, 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 sustainable development of uh, from United Nations. Uh, so we think it's a core value for. Uh, global human being uh, rise and uh, better future. So um, we follow this uh, uh, target, uh, follow SDGs uh, and change uh, our technology uh, to uh, provide better edu uh, education and better uh, art, uh, better uh, uh, medical uh, wow. healthcare for uh, global uh, uh, for, for all of us uh, uh, benefits. So uh, maybe uh, there are uh, still um, uh, difference uh, between uh, Asian and uh, um, uh, North uh, America and Europe uh, um, and other uh, place. Uh, but we think um, there we have the uh, same benefits and the um, same uh, as uh, expectation for, for okay. the future. Yeah. Okay, actually, uh, I, I just from my personal interpretation of the statement is more, almost like uh, uh, we may, as soon as we have good original intention, we might be differences like what uh, Yushun has mentioned. As soon as we have good original intention, we can share benefits working together. That's how I interpret it in a very common popular science perspective, right? So that's good. Uh, I think uh, there's something there. So all time, I, I, I just Google this word, right? This is like a word I never learned before. It's called algromerations, right? And I mm -hmm. think you use that a lot in your presentation on the urban planning. I know that there's something special about that. That's why I gave you a lot of space in that part of the presentation. Could you, can you articulate in a very simple term so all of us can understand? Yes. Uh, an urban agglomeration is basically um, a number of cities which are very close by. The Yangtze Delta, for instance, is an urban agglomeration with more than three, 30 cities with more than a million population. So I it's see. a big agglomeration and usually it's administrated at the city level and not at the agglomeration level. And that's bad. I see. Okay. Uh, interesting. Okay. I think it's an it's a, it's a idea I just learned from uh, reading all your presentation. I think these are new ideas, at least it's actually intriguing to me personally. So I think that's one thing I like to ask you all to clarify, right? So the next thing I, I, I observe is that uh, uh, many of you have talked about uh, share, uh, future alliance, uh, Francesca has mentioned social good patterns, 
Uh, I like the one by Ben also, respect for ethics, culture, and common virtue, right? Then I think uh, uh, Old Time has offered something more engineering called evidence-based decision. Very engineering, you know, uh, very German actually, right? Evidence-based decision, right? And then very, uh, very, uh, vastly different innovation cycle, strong interdependency. So it's about putting it together. Uh, actually, I don't have a particular question. I'd like you all to comment on this one. Any one of you, feel free to step in, right? This is about how to work together, right? Now, after this session is over, I hope we can continue to work together virtually as well as physically, right? Maybe at the World AI Conference physically in July or next year, right? Or in Singapore. So anyone want to comment on this? Any one of you? Any comments? Uh, okay. And then... Yeah, <laughs> go ahead, Ben. Yes. Uh, um, basic. Uh, we we need uh three, uh three things. The first one is uh, uh, uh principles. Uh, based on the uh core values. Uh, for human being, and the second is standard. Uh, we need uh ethics standard and uh technology standard. Uh, for all of us for. Uh, enter enterprise and uh, public service. Uh, the third thing is uh, third thing is the um, uh, governance model for enterprise, for industry, uh, and uh, even for the government. Uh, so uh, we think uh, based on the three things, we can uh, uh, co co collaborate and for the future, for the better future. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Ben. I want to pose this question to Francesca. Francesca, you are the global IBM leader, right? But one of these, in fact, IBM is so big, you could be the global leader for all of us, right? How would you bring us together to work together? Francesca? Well, uh, I mean, again, I think that, uh, um, I mean, this idea that uh, you need really to um, understand each other values and the way these values are implemented into principles and action. I mean, it's very important to, I think that this is a shared idea that is very important to uh, really make this technology really sustainable for society, for the planet, but also the technology itself to be sustainable. So, um, um, so I, I uh, again, here we focus mostly on uh, um, the e sustainable impact on our life, our society, our planet, uh, but uh, I agree with what was said also about sustainability of the technology itself, which uh, has seen really an explosion of computing power and data, and of course there are a lot of research avenues that we can explore together because research is global, is very collaborative, uh, it doesn't have boundaries, um, and we can explore together to really advance AI as a science, as a technology, in a way that is more sustainable. And in my view, that also brings more to work, goes more towards uh, uh, achieving better, you know, capabilities for AI. So just okay. increasing the amount of data and computing power, I don't believe that is going to really to, to help advance significantly AI. We need neurosymbolic and, and uh, general concepts. And possible, for example, in my research project, uh, we leverage knowledge of uh, uh, from neuroscience and cognitive science. So that research is really how we can start, and we already do, working together. I see. Francisca, thank you very much. As I mentioned, I'm serious about what I say, because you work, we work with the, one of the biggest company in the world with a worldwide reach. Uh, I think you will play a very important leadership role especially not just as IBM, but I think as the next president of Triple uh, AI, I think you will play a big role to impact on all of us, especially in this area, right? Uh, all time and Yusun, you want to comment on this? Uh, or I'll move to the next one. There's one more box at the bottom, right? Basically. Yes, maybe you move on, right? Yeah, because let's move on. Quite late. Yes. Okay, the next one that I've actually summarized, very, very interesting is about technology. Very interestingly, as I was asking Francesca, she brought up some of this thing and some of the comment was written by Ben actually. Uh, so I think uh, in IBM, we talk about uh, platform infrastructure, trustworthy AI infrastructure that Sensei has brought up. 
you mentioned about the performance, high performance computing thing, right? Then you soon also brought out this technology thing about data hungry computing and et cetera, right? So what's next in terms of technology, right? Basically and research. Of course, I think aligned with what Francesca has mentioned, we need to be inclusive in terms of industry collaboration, open for academic uh, research and balance intellectual property rights, right? So these are things, this is another area I'd like to hear from any one of you, feel free. Eh? Or time or you soon, given. <clears throat> maybe maybe I, I jump in. I, I think what is not considered mostly in those discussions is that knowledge is a basis for most of AI technologies. And the question is, how can we collect that knowledge? And of course, uh, we can build uh, neural networks and we feed some data into them. And then, of course, we have all those problems that the model is not explainable anymore and we have to trust that it is right. And we know there are in, uh, examples where those models were not right. So. Okay. Uh, a trustworthy AI infrastructure really needs to be explainable and it needs to be based on solid knowledge, right? And I think those are the most two important issues with AI. Okay, thank you. I am actually in, in agreement with you. For the audience sake, some of you may not understand what it means by neural symbolic, right? These are different generation of AI technology that is actually researcher are working on the front, forefront. Uh, Yushun, you want to comment on this particular one since you have many points that you brought up about uh, black box and data hungry uh, computing. You want to say anything? I think in terms of trustworthiness, uh, it has already been mentioned by several of the panel members. I'll, I'll focus probably more on the data hungry and the compute hungry aspects. Now, as, as I mentioned, many of all these results uh, publish are all done via very much, I would say, brute force compute power, getting more and more into that as evident in many other applications because accuracy has always been the key objective. Mm. And what surprises me is that as an academic, I've seen a lot of papers that are even uh, fine-tuning the random seed in order to outperform in terms of accuracy. To me, I mean, this is nothing heard of in, in, in my traditional academics uh, career. So, but, but now in order to be able to outperform somebody in terms of the benchmark data set, many of the students or, or many of the papers had to even fine tune the random seed in order to, to get it published. Sure. I'm not too sure whether this is healthy and Another thing that I'd like to highlight is, you know, many of these results, as, as I say, are uh, preventing people from the academics to be able to publish and do, do research in other areas instead of just relying on pure compute power. I see. So I'm not sure whether people are aware of this rise of the rig AI, yeah. where, where the AI has now uh, been designed using new emission metrics. For example, the amount of energy power consumption that it makes, reporting all the energy power consumption, the number of parameters, the amount of GPUs utilization, and uh, runtime, work clock timing, uh, training time. So, so it gives a more multi-criteria type of a reporting on how is that model performance as opposed to just pure accuracy and whoever has the high, greatest compute power wins. So to speak. Thank you, Yusun. I think you are talking about in the research arena, how can it be more sustainable? Is one of the problems we need to address for sure. <clears throat> well, I'll talk to you sometime over coffee oh, on this one, <laughs> as well as with other people. Actually, the knowledge part of it that uh, all time has mentioned is very critical. Uh, actually, we are running out of time. I want to get to one or two questions from the audience. Uh, and uh, I'm going to go with first one first, and all of you feel free to answer. This one is a bit long, but I think I picked this one because I think it's quite relevant uh, to the context. He said, how can we take part in co-shifting sustainable future using AI? This gentleman said, uh, most of us are commoners. We are not AI expert, eh? uh, government or policymaker. They are not any of this, just a common people, they say. 
in the context of education, how can we raise awareness about the importance of AI for social good to students? More importantly, how do we commit students to take part? Right? In fact, that's the purpose of this webinar as part of it. Do you guys, how do you, any one of you want to comment on this one? I'm sure this is an easy question, answer for you all to give. How may, do we, may, I jump, yeah. may I jump in just, again as the first one? I think uh, uh, technologies like AI people don't know the applications. So everybody who is good as, at his or her profession is capable to be one of the stakeholders in a project to improve, for instance, uh, sustainability tools in their profession, in their area, with the help of AI people. In the end, AI is just maybe some hardware and a lot of software. And the application people and the AI people have to work together to make it happen. I see. Okay, I understand. Domain expertise, uh, application is important. Francesca, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you. No, I mean, uh, I agree. I agree that everybody can play its part in uh, uh, making whatever they do more sustainable, also through the use of the technology. Of course, uh, the experts need to be uh, also play their part in uh, disseminating the main ideas and making people understand in the, whatever job they do in what this technology can bring to their job and how it should be used in a sustainable way. So the education and dissemination part is, is very important. Um, yeah, unfortunately okay. I need to leave very soon because I have another event and I'm already 10 minutes late. Okay, thank you. Francisca, feel free to leave. We will continue the conversation for those who can stay, right? Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Any one of you want to answer these particular questions? Uh, Yusun or Ben, the education part of it? Yeah, uh, we think uh, um, after 10 years, uh, AI is a fundamental skills for everyone uh, in, uh, in the social, uh, uh, but uh, we, we need, uh, um, uh, we need uh, fundamental uh, education and classes for uh, for the children and for the industrial workers. Uh, so um, it's the best way, uh, maybe it's one of the best ways to provide uh, the online uh, classes, AI classes for everyone uh, uh, with uh, open source library. Uh, um, if, uh, if you cannot uh, program, uh, it's fine. You can uh, build uh, application AI application based on the open source uh, uh, open source tools. So you can uh, create uh, some special uh, uh, AI devices uh, or some AI program for uh, for your uh, school for your uh, enterprise. So uh, we think uh, the, the most innovation value from uh, is, is not from AI labs, but uh, from uh, uh, everyone, every children and every uh, uh, people uh, uh, near us. Yeah. Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, I want to pose one more question to answer one more question, if you guys allow me. Uh, this one is actually more technical, but I like to have uh, all time and you soon answer this. The question is from Luis Ramos. The question is, AI is based on statistics or machine learning is based on statistics. What about knowledge representation? Uh, this is the last technical question I'd like to have somebody answering, but I'm sure you soon and uh, all time has a lot of things to add to that. <laughs> sure. Knowledge representation, of course, is needed to represent the knowledge which has to be created, for instance, by people, right? Then you need some high-level knowledge representation. On the other hand, this is very time-consuming, very expensive, so you use machine learning, learning from data to achieve knowledge, right? And that's those are the two ways you can get to some formalized knowledge, which is, as I pointed out earlier, very, very important. Okay. You soon you want to answer this? As a... Well, I, I would say that knowledge representation has always been there. In fact, if you look at many of the major conferences, there's this representation learning. So these are 
uh, representation that are learned from the data itself and will be suitable and appropriate for different domains. And uh, other forms of representations that are human rationalizable and human interpretable. This will, this is why you know you have this symbolic neural AI, which is why there is this layer of logic or other forms of representation that human okay. could interpret that Good. comes in in a hybrid form. Yeah. Uh, uh, for all those audience, if you don't have background in AI, probably it's difficult to understand this, but do not worry. Next time we'll organize more events to explain some of the uh, intricacy of all these uh, uh, AI languages. Huh? Uh, thank you very much. I think we run out of time. I don't want to drag for long. We're already longer than uh, 15 minutes. Uh, unfortunately, Francesca has to leave for another call. Uh, I want to give the three speakers uh, 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 last words. Anything you want to leave with the audience with your 30 second or one minute? Uh, maybe I start with uh, Otai. Uh, okay, my last sentence would be uh, that AI is not a silver bullet to solve every problem, but it's a very power, a set of very powerful technologies which can solve problems we couldn't think of, let's say, 20 years ago. But because it's so powerful, we really need AI ethics, so only the good things will be implemented by AI technology. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, Yusun, last statement. Well, I would like to just say that, you know, I believe AI is here to stay and become a technology that is commonplace. And like, like IT and many technologies, uh, it will eventually be transformed into something that's easy to use, be it via drag and drop uh, features such that, uh, uh, you know, certain models are probably already fine-tuned and easily fine-tuned for, for specific applicants, applications over time. So I don't think we have to get too worried about AI because it's, it's a matter of time before it evolves into that. But at the same time, I would say that education of AI is important, like what Ben has mentioned. And mm. in fact, there are many countries that have really incorporated AI as part of the education, even at primary school level, or at the junior level to understand the basics of AI because AI is a very, very broad topic. It depends on what level of complexity are you dealing with. Yeah. So Thank that's you. My and, last yeah, message. I just want to add that also. AI Singapore has just launched the uh, AI for kids as well. So in Singapore, Singapore is taking some initiative. Ben, your last words? Yeah. Uh, let's create more responsible AI technologies uh, for for a better future, for, uh, for the better world, uh, and help us to, um, uh, especially for, uh, for children and uh, older, pe uh, older people uh, to get a better life and uh, environment. Yeah, thank okay. you. Okay, thank you. I'd like to really say thank to all the four speakers uh, really uh, contributing the invaluable time for rehearsal and also the team that actually put it together. Also for all the audience, uh, as a last words, uh, I'm glad to be moderating it. It's an honor to be inviting all the speaker and participate and share with the global audience. And uh, this topic of sustainable AI is something that matters to everybody, regardless of whether you're in the field of AI or you're, you're a person who are in the certain domain. So I think it's not the purpose of this webinar is not the end, it's just the beginning. So I'm sure that will actually serve as the first part of the education so that all of you can get involved. If you are interested in getting involved, uh, again, I'm going to uh, uh, show the, the, on the screen the QR code for you to join the group or the WeChat group if you're in China. So as such, uh, we're going to go into one more help for everybody. If you guys can stay a little bit longer, can you please kind of turn on your video so that our team can take a photo? Thank you. Make sure you put out the best smile. Uh, I see some of the familiar faces. And uh, Alan and Saya, are you all ready to take photo? Yes, we are ready. Yes, I look at many charming faces. Thank you very much for showing. Your participation in taking this photo will help us a lot. Yes, Alan, we are at your mercy. I'm gonna keep smiling, okay? Yep. Thank you, smile. First screen. Ready? One, two, three, smile. Cheers. 
second screen of audience. Ready? One, two, three, smile. Third screen of uh, audience. Ready? One, two, three, smile. Okay, I'm done. James. Okay, thank you so much. I thank you, everybody. I'm going to uh, keep the slide on and we'll, I'll be hanging around here for the next 15 minutes or so. If you want to chat, turn on your video, uh, voice and we can talk anytime. So I'm going to move to the next chart. Feel free to scan the QR code from the link in as well on WeChat. I would appreciate if all of you could actually go to a uh, link in or WeChat and give us some comments. Uh, let us know how you feel and let us give us some feedback how we can do better. I know that we have run over a little bit today. Uh, apologize for that part because we have some technical problem at the beginning. Thank you. Alan, I think you can start ending the recording. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Yusun. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Uh, all time. Thank you. Really appreciate you. everybody's time staying out late. Thank Hi, you. Peter. Nice seeing Peter. I see Claire.